Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the AppSmith Deploy event. I'm Nikhil Nandagopal, the Chief Product Officer here at AppSmith, and I'm going to be talking to you about accelerating app development for all team sizes. Now, when we look at the evolution of the AppSmith platform, we start off as an open source project that developers used to build a front end on top of their back end data sources. And today, we're a full blown enterprise low code solution that teams use to bring to build mission critical applications. But what hasn't changed in this entire journey has been our focus on developers. We continue to invest in a better developer experience that makes it easier for developers to build their applications and get to value faster. What makes us so uniquely positioned for developers is that you can control any part of the application using JavaScript. You even have a centralized ID where you can write all of your business logic. And the best part is that AppSmith fully integrates with your software development lifecycle by connecting your applications to Git so that you can merge all of your changes, go through code review processes, and even integrate with CICD. Now, being developer focused requires us to take a unique approach to performance and the acceleration of app building. Most tools out there approach this by abstracting away a lot of the controls to building applications and thereby kind of allow you to build things quicker, but at the cost of the flexibility of the platform, as well as the cost of the controls in managing these applications. At AppSmith, we know that developers love writing code. We understand that they actually want control over their applications so that they are not a black box and that they can understand how they work so that they can better edit and manage them. So our approach to accelerating application development has been to improve the usability of the tools to build applications, as well as make sure that they are very easy to learn. We also understand that application building is not just about the development of the application. It also requires the deployment of these applications. And therefore, it's essential that these applications integrate fully with the regular STLC and DevOps processes. Faster application development requires a better ID. With that, we're launching IDE 2.0, and one of the biggest updates to our IDE is the ability to now see all of your core business logic alongside your UI. With this, you can now make changes to your business logic and see them reflected in your UI instantly, thereby increasing the rate at which you can iterate on your applications. Let's head into a demo of how this works. So this is our new ID. And one of the first things that you'll note that we've introduced is a set of building blocks that you can use to build your applications. Now, building blocks are a collection of widgets, queries, and JavaScript that are a common pattern in most applications and perform a specific task. With building blocks, we make it really easy for you to drag and drop them on the screen and they provide you with all of this functionality out of the box. What makes building blocks really different from widgets is that it comes with complete functionality. So you can actually filter, search, and even paginate all of your data as soon as you drag and drop them. So now all you really need to do is go ahead and edit this block so that it works with your own data. Now at AppSmith, one of the key things I said was that we actually don't like to abstract away a lot of the control from developers. And so with building blocks as well, you can easily head on over to our query section and see the actual code that's powering this block. You can see the query that's written over here, and we can easily make changes to this query. Right now, I'm going to change it to work with a product table, and I'm going to remove some of these where clauses so that it accurately fetches the product information. And as I'm running this new query, 
in real time, I can actually see the updates to my UI. That's the power of the split view because you can actually make changes and see the effect of your changes in real time and therefore iterate on your code much faster. We've also made it really easy for you to switch between queries, JavaScript, and UI by grouping these common actions together in a segmented control. We've launched over six to seven different building blocks, all in the screen over here that you can now use for various use cases like charting, forms, file upload, and even list lookups so that you don't actually have to spend a lot of time building these common patterns from scratch and therefore your development speed is now reduced. Another really important change that we've made to the ID is the introduction of tabs. We've made it really easy for you to create new queries on top of your data sources and create a new tab out of them. Tabs allow you to manage all of your recently used entities the same way that you would in your favorite ID. The great thing about tab management is that they also remain um, contextual to your most recent access entity so that once you go back, you can see that that same entity is available for you to access and edit. So with some of these changes that we've made today, we truly believe that we are making a much better tool that will enable developers to build their applications faster, help them navigate their ID, as well as create patterns that they can reuse over and over again so that they don't need to build them from scratch. So to summarize, we are introducing building blocks, which are common patterns that most applications need so that you can use them out of the box and modify them for your use case. We are organizing most entities that you use, such as UI, queries, and JavaScript together so that you can easily access them. We're introducing a side-by-side -side view so that you can make edits to your core business logic and see those updates in real time and iterate on them very, very quickly. And we're also introducing tabs uh, as a new navigation mechanism that will make it much easier for you to go back to those recently used entities. Now, faster application development also requires more reusability. While building blocks provides one form of reusability in terms of providing you with blocks that are common across most applications, a lot of your applications are also unique. And so with that, we launched packages with the intent to give developers the ability to go ahead and modularize and reuse their code across their different applications. Today, we're extending the functionality of our packages to ensure that the modules within packages can also reference each other and create higher levels of abstraction on top of each other. Let's head into a demo of what that looks like. So here in our packages application, what we have is a simple user's table that is fetching data. And it's using the users, the fetch users query from the users package. Now, we also want to go ahead and create a loan application form that is displaying all of those users so that a loan agent can select a customer from the users list and then go ahead and apply for a loan for them. Now, we would like to use the same fetch users package, but the fetch users package right now, it returns the data in a format that is useful for a table but not so much for a select widget. So what can we do? Let's head on over to the package. This is the fetch users module that we have, and we can see that it's returning all of the data. We now want to go ahead and create a simple JavaScript transformer that also references the fetch users module and transforms its data type that will match the select widget. We can very easily access the fetch users module directly using the autocomplete. And what's even more is that we are intuitively able to inspect the interface of the fetch users module and autofill all of the fields automatically for our users. So with this, we can simply return the response of fetch users and see that we are able to access that module from the utils module. 
Now we want to go ahead and store this response as well as return a map of it. So let's go ahead and create a mapper function that takes in a user object and returns it as a label comma value. So you want to return a use a label of the username as well as the value of the user ID. And once we run this function, what we should be able to see is the exact same data from the fetch users module, but now a modified version of it that is compatible with the select agent. So let's go ahead and publish this and head on back to our package. Inside our package, what we can do now is go ahead and import the utility that we just created. Let's run it on page load, as well as ensure that it's working. Wonderful. Let's now head on over to the select widget. And using binding, we can go ahead and reference the transform users.data. And immediately, we can see all of the users over here. So now our loan agents can easily select the user that they want to actually create the loan for and go ahead and fill up the rest of the fields. So with this, different modules can actually work on top of each other and reuse each other's code. And this works great because this also creates a single point of updates where say we wanted to change the order of the response from IDs to names because names are a lot more user friendly. So now that we've ordered these by names, we can go ahead and publish them and head back to the actual package. So we can see that they are updated here as well as once we go ahead to the select widget, we can see that these list of users are also ordered correctly. So with this, creating greater levels of abstraction allows you to have a single point of change and allows you to accelerate your development even faster. So we're really excited about some of these new enhancements that we're making to our packages feature. And with this, we believe that greater abstraction leads to accelerated development. And also, we're introducing better coding because it's the autocomplete for the inputs now work a lot better. And they also autofill the run methods so that the developer experience of creating these packages is far, far more, uh, is far, far ahead of what we had before. Faster application development also requires seamless integration with Git. Now, while we've had our Git feature for a while, we're introducing two important changes that are going to improve the quality of using this feature. The first change is the introduction of separate system commits. Till date, when the platform makes changes to the underlying architecture, it can occur that platform commits get intermingled with user commits, and that can create confusion while you're, while you're building your application. With separate system commits, you will see fewer merge conflicts and lesser confusion while you're making changes to your application, and you can be confident that only the changes that you're making are going live. We're also introducing a more transparent change log. Till now, we've had a very high level change log but you're introducing more granular levels of changes so that you can be confident of the exact changes you're making to your application. Here's a sneak preview of what that looks like. You can see every single query as well as JavaScript and widget that was actually changed on that page. And also you're aware of whether it was added, removed or modified. And this gives you the confidence that only the changes that you intended to make are actually being committed to this application and will end up going to your users. So with this, we're introducing a host of different features that improve the core tooling of the AppSet platform and will enable developers to actually build their applications much faster. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, as we launch all of these various features, and I invite each and every one of you to try them out.